presentation around the use of real-time sensors in the summer fruit industry. Um, um, it's a project led by Dr. Ian Goodwin of question and answer fame, last presentation from Agriculture Victoria Research and a team from RMIT, Green Atlas and Rubens Technology. Ian will be presenting. This will actually be the first of two presentations. Um, it's a large project and the second one later today will focus on one of the candidate technologies. But um, for now, um, over to Ian, this project really is about focusing on improving total export quality of Australian summer fruits to Asia. Um, if successful, this will help exporters achieve a, a, a two to threefold gain um, on shipments into Asia in price, for example, uh, very significant to the industry. So Ian, welcome and good to hear from you. Uh, yeah, thanks, Dave. <clears throat> Hopefully I've got my screen sharing. It's working well, Ian. We, we see your normal slide view, but that's that's quite adequate if you have troubles with it. There you go, that's good. Got it. <laughs> well, thanks for the introduction, Dave. Um, and yes, I will be presenting uh, uh, not the project in its entirety, uh, but part of the project. Alex uh, Giardi will present um, their component of the project a bit later on. Um, and yeah, just a point too, that we're about halfway, a bit over halfway through this project. We've still got a, a, a subsequent season to go uh, where hopefully we can continue to do some pretty good work. Um, so first of all, a bit of uh, background behind the project. Um, the, the project is very, it, it is specifically fo focused on summer fruit. Uh, the, the crops that come under summer fruit are peach, nectarine, apricot and plum. Um, and a couple of figures here just really to highlight that uh, exports of summer fruit were uh, increasing quite uh, quite a bit in the last 10 or so years. Um, and, you know, those exports were largely going to China and they actually still are going to China um, and, of course, other Asian countries as well. Um, the figure on the left there, I also wanted to highlight, you know, in the last couple of seasons, you know, the, the growers and exporters have been hit by uh, the problems associated with COVID in, in air freight. The, the cost of that has gone through the roof. So, um, uh, you know, that's probably why we've had a bit of a plateau or a slight downturn in exports, exports in the last two seasons. Uh, but you'll note too that the, the price per kilo is actually still going up, which is great. Um, there are also, you know, quite a few new orchard developments that probably just slowed down for now, given the problems of uh, we're all faced with res with respect to um, uh, COVID, in particular, you know, labour shortages. Um, so, with respect to um, exporting, you know, summer fruit, it's really critical that you know fruit consistently meets market demand and, of course, consumer satisfaction. I've been uh, lectured quite a bit in the last few weeks about the principles of wombat. Um, wombat uh, um, meaning word of mouth, buy and tell. In other words, it's not a sell job. It's about a product that consumers are going to ex enjoy and meet their requirements and go and tell all their friends and then they'll buy you know, more fruit. So, um, so there's, the dot points in this slide also show, you know, what, how we can or how a grower can actually uh, meet those requirements through uh, orchard management. You know, examples there, thinning irrigation and summer pruning, harvest timing, which is probably the most critical of all for summer fruit so that um, uh, fruit can meet market requirements and, of course, has to go through a period of storage uh, transport and there is also a requirement that it sits on a um, in a supermarket for a few days before a consumer actually buys it. Um, yield estimates, yield estimates, in other words, prior to harvest are important because that you know provides growers uh, uh, the ability to guarantee supply um, and uh, you know <laughs> estimating yield after you've actually harvested is not not as good as what you could get out of being able to do it before harvest. And of course, you know, value chain fruit quality is important as well. Um, and, 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 you know, a lot of um, fruit gets graded, of course, in, in a packing shed. 
Um, but, you know, that's only at the point of grading. It, there is no uh, measures downstream of that in terms of fruit quality. <clears throat> um, and just some examples here of, you know, what growers currently use with respect to trying to determine when they need to pick the fruit so that it's going to be uh, uh, meet market requirements and go through all the rigours of storage and transport, et cetera. Um, they use, you know, various uh, metrics, for example, fruit diameter, skin colour, flesh firmness, soluble solids and other sweetness. Uh, in more recent times, people have been using the DA meter to measure the index of absorbance difference. In other words, uh, an estimate of physiological maturity of the fruit. Uh, but of, of, of all these different methods, a lot of them are, 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 are still organoleptic. In other words, you know, people are um, estimating the diameter of fruit based on a visual assessment. Skin colour is 100% visually assessed. And even uh, fruit sweet sweetness is, um, uh, you know, pick and taste is still the survey we did. It was something like, you know, 65% of the growers are still uh, using a, a, a subjective assessment of fruit sweetness based on them eating it. And of course, a lot of any of the other you know, measures they might uh, use, uh, for example, fruit firmness is, a, is destructive. In other words, you know, fruit has to be picked. Um, so the objective of this project is all about uh, testing the accuracy and utility of real-time sensor technologies uh, to assist growers and exporters to improve the export quality of Australian summer fruit um, and a real focus on being able to measure fruit size, sweetness and skin, skin colour, uh, in other words, you know, fruit quali quality um, parameters, uh, fruit number and yield, fruit maturity, which I still come back to fruit maturity as being such an important measure for growers to, to uh, know exactly when to pick their fruit. And, and the, the last dot, dot point there is about fruit internal disorders, particularly in the cool chain where um, fruit can start to have internal disorders, which of course is gonna not be picked up by visual observations. Um, and it can be a bit of a disaster in the marketplace. So what sensors did we, uh, have we been testing during this project? Um, there's basically four. First of all, got a fluorescence reflectance spectrometer from Rubens Technologies um, with the uh, capability to measure maturity, firmness, sweetness, and internal disorders. Uh, another sensor from Rubens Technologies is a colorimeter for measuring fruit skin color. And uh, the third sensor that I'll be presenting today is a, a platform, uh, a sensing platform called Cartographer, um, made by Green Atlas. And, uh, you know, we've been testing that for, the, for its ability to measure count fruit, uh, measure fruit size, yield and fruit colour in, uh, in summer fruit orchards. The fourth sensor there is the biostatic LIDAR, which will be presented by the team from RMIT later on. So I won't talk about that one at all. Um, so first of all, uh, uh, the next three slides, a bit of the specs on the different sensors. This is the fluorescent sensor. It's basically um, in a handheld device. It can measure fruit in situ, non-destructively, i.e. when it's on the tree. Um, it, it, it has a, a, a spectrometer built into it for, for measuring light in the wave band 350 to 950 nanometers. And it's got three LED light sources, near infrared, a visible or white light uh, uh, source and an ultraviolet source. And so the ultraviolet source is for measuring fluorescence. Um, it'll be detected of course by the spectrometer. Um, the device, the handheld device has got Bluetooth connectivity, which is a you know, great feature, a lot of sensors nowadays, it's, it's really good. So, you know, data can be um, transmitted straight to a, a, a mobile app. Uh, and uh, of course, it's also got, you know, uh, the Rubens have also built a, a, like a dashboard, if you like, for a, a PC um, to actually display more of the data than what you could probably fit on a, a mobile, mobile phone. Um, 
the color colorimeter sensor. It's a pretty simple device, um, just with a, 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 a white LED illuminant, and then it's it's measuring. Uh, it's got sensors in it for measuring red, green, and blue, uh, and that of course is then built into the um, into the app is converted to uh, the C Lab our standard color uh, measures of uh, L star, A star, and B star. And if it too has, um, of course, Bluetooth connectivity. Um, and we've also, you know, and, and Ruben's technologies have, you know, purposely built apps so that they can not only be able to connect to these devices, but the data can easily be imported into a, 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 a like a, a, a spreadsheet um, uh, that, you know, you can either put on a cloud or, or email it to yourself or whatever you want. So uh, it's quite a, 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 a useful app associated with uh, both of these um, instruments. Um, and yeah, the third sensor sensors I'll talk about is um, uh, the Green Atlas Cartographer. It's, uh, as you can see, the uh, sensors are mounted on a, in our particular case, we're using an electric ATV, uh, you know, Green Atlas sell the instrumentation, et cetera. And, you know, you can mount it on whatever mobile vehicle you want. Um, but the, the guts of it, I'll just use my mouse if I can point to the sensors so that the LIDAR is this, this device at the back here with a blue ring around it. Um, then there's uh, strobe lights, there's four strobe lights, um, one here, one on the opposite side, and then the two lower ones here, one here and one here. So we're illuminating both sides of the of, of, of the vehicle. So you, you're picking up two rows. Uh, and then the optical cameras, are, there's one here, and then there's one on the uh, pointing the opposite direction. In other words, a total of two optical cameras that are synchronized, of course, with the strobe lights. So they're taking images, I think it's roughly about five Im images per second as you drive down the row. Um, and there's a GPS unit on top here. Th th this, this one was just after we purchased it also. It doesn't actually show the infrared temperature sensors, but just on this bar up the top here, we've got a uh, uh, infrared temp temperature sensors, um, two, one pointing one way and one pointing the other way. So the data from uh, this, these sensors is um, collected in a, a hard drive that sits on the back of the, you know, the computer in here. Uh, that then um, you can just take off that hard drive, disconnect it, plug it into a, a, another computer. So the data just goes onto a cloud and gets um, all the computations done on it. Um, so there, yeah, that's basically an overview of the sensors. Um, so the research where we did the, uh, you know, testing these sensors, um, we did it at the Tatura Smart Farm in the central Victoria in the Golden Valley. Uh, we've got a couple of orchards on the, uh, it's agricultural Victoria site. Uh, we've got a couple of stone fruit orchards, one being uh, the Sundial Orchard, which is up in the right top right hand corner there. Uh, have rows of trees at different orientations. Um, one cultivar of nectarine. And then we have a, another reasonably large you know, experimental orchard that's dedicated to different stone fruit crops. In other words, nectarine, uh, peach, apricot, and plums. Um, and we use as, we used also the facilities at Tatura in terms of our fruit grading facilities, as well as at AgriBio, the post-harvest laboratories, for um, looking at um, uh, the um, establishing um, different treatments for in, for during the cool chain. Uh, there's a couple of growers too there that have um, uh, we've actually demonstrated you know, some of this technology too and. Um, a couple of the big growers in the Golden Valley. Uh, so with respect to the fluorescent sensor, so um, we went through a process of calibration for uh, maturity, sweetness and firmness. Um, we compared, we were comparing the fluorescent sensor with uh, various um, laboratory measurements, including ethylene production rate, that's a, our best measure of physiological maturity, but of course, you know, it's, it's not a simple measurement to take. Um, we compared it against the DA meter, which is measuring the greenness just below the skin of the fruit. 
the basic, you know, refractometer for soluble solids concentration, penetrometer firmness. And we did this on four cultivars of peach and nectarines, both in the lab laboratory and also in the field. Uh, so see, these are some of the results from the fluorescent sensor. The, the, this is the laboratory calibration. It's just results from one cultivar of um, the white flesh peach. And um, the four figures there are from left to right, ethylene index of absorbance difference, um, soluble solids concentration, and then fruit firmness on the far, on your far right. And of course, um, uh, you know, the, the predicted uh, measure, whether it's ethylene, et cetera, uh, was based on the, uh, um, if you like, it's a, 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 a uh, the company Rubens used a you know, machine learning approach, um, partial least, least squares regression combined with, um, well, <laughs> you know, I'm not a statistician, but there was a lot of statistics behind, um, you know, developing the, 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 the models based on the spectral, spectral data that was collected from the sensor. So this is the best fit that you could get from that, the, the um, uh, model development from that uh, reflectance data and uh, fluorescence data. So it's a combination of both the visual reflectance and uh, fluorescence data. So, um, uh, so th these models are, are quite good. Of course, it is calibration. So now these models have built, been built, you know, the next step in this project is to go out and uh, field validate these. Um, we also did some field calibration. So the last set of graphs were just, you know, the fruit was picked and brought it into the laboratory to do those um, measurements. This was actually where we took those measurements with the fluorescent sensor uh, on fruit in, in a tree and then picked the fruit and brought it back into the lab and measured the um, soluble solids concentration in fruit firmness. And again, you know, we found a, a pretty good, uh, the, the models were built to give a pretty good prediction of, of um, these two parameters. Um, a, a, again, a, another uh, well, it was a different yellow flesh. Um, this case was a yellow flesh peach. Um, in terms of the work we did in trying to uh, calibrate the sensor for internal disorders, um, I, I think this is a pretty innovative bit of work where we um, basically went through a whole series of cool storage experiments where we could actually, you know, after fruit was harvested, we had it at um, uh, uh, put it into cool storage at you know, zero to four weeks, um, took fruit out every week and did measurements on it. Um, and then uh, also, you know, after that fruit was taken out of cool storage, some of it, you know, we ripened over a period from naught to four days. So during all those treatments, we were basically taking measurements with the fluorescence sensor and then some of the fruit after ripening, for example, of four days, we would do a, a visual assessment. In other words, a destructive, you know, cutting the fruit open and looking for internal disorders like, as that photo there shows, you know, internal browning um, or uh, mealiness of the fruit. <clears throat> Nothing better than biting into an, a beautiful nectarine and finding that it's brown inside. Um, so yeah, the results, these are what call, are called confusion matrices. So yeah, um, it, it is a little bit confusing, but I'll try to explain it. So these are results um, from the, uh, a Henry yellow flesh peach. Um, so what we what we did is what what this um, fig, these two figures are showing. First of all, the figure on the left is the forecast at harvest. In other words, this is the spectral data that was taken at harvest on a fruit before it went into cool storage or before it was ripened over those different periods of time. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, subsequent to that fruit being harvested and those measurements taken, uh, you know there was a um, fruit was uh, cut open and over those periods of time to, to, and under those different treatments to see whether it was suffering from any internal disorders. So it's really a forecast of whether a fruit's going to actually develop internal disorders. So of course there were some false negatives and false positives, but it's reasonably good. You know, 72% accuracy isn't too bad given that you know, we're, we're actually trying to use this to forecast if a fruit is going to develop internal browning or other internal disorders. The, the figure on the right is, is the detection. In other words, you know, scanning a fruit 
and then immediately cutting it open and looking for internal disorders. And of course, it, the, the models that were built from the fluorescent sensor gave a pretty good um, prediction, 92% accuracy of predicting whether a fruit had internal uh, disorders or not. <clears throat> um, the colorimeter sensor, so we went through a process first of calibration using um, uh, against a spectrophotometer, a Minolta spectrophotometer, which is shown there just below those dot points. Um, and uh, we used firstly for calibration, we used um, comparison of different color cards. In other words, the uh, uh, Minolta spectrophotometer versus the colorimeter um, and developed that initial calibration. And then um, we also went out in the, it, it, and did it on some fruit uh, including, um, it, well, the four species that we're concerned with, plum, apricot, peach, and nectarine, across a total of um, seven, di seven different cultivars. And these are the results from that, um, firstly, calibration, and then the, uh, when we went out and did the measurements on, on real bits of fruit is, is what I'm calling validation in this particular case. So the grey points on these figures are the, the calibration with the colour cards and the red uh, inverted triangles are the, um, um, the, the, the measurements that were actually taken on the fruit. So, you know, the, the, both the calibration and the observations that were made on the fruit line up pretty well. And it's and they're reasonably close to a one-to-one -one, um, relationship. So we're quite, you know, prepared to accept that the colorimeter can give us a pretty good indicator of um, uh, colour equivalent to what a, a, a Minolta spectrophotometer can give. Um, the cartographer, so um, yes, we've been going through a whole lot of work in terms of testing the accuracy of the cartographer, which is commercially available for several crops, um, particularly in our case, it's been used for apples, for, for counting you know, apples in an orchard and, and and um, looking at the spatial variation across a, a block in terms of crop load, in other words, fruit number, um, but also estimating the variation in yield across the block as well. Um, so what, of course, we were wanting to do was, you know, test whether it can be used in some of these stone fruit crops, um, but also to take it a step further and try and use it to actually uh, measure, get a measure of, of fruit size and, um, and fruit colour, skin colour, in other words. So um, yes, you can see the photos there. The, the one on the far left is um, we actually hung different colored tennis balls in the trees, as well as um, you know, color cards uh, as a, you know, an, an initial calibration of the, you know, to see whether the cartographer could identify the um, tennis balls and of course the color cards to try to um, work out if we could actually estimate you know, fruit color from, um, from the, from the instrument. Um, we also, you know, had tag fruit within the trees where we um, actually were measuring skin color, uh, measuring the diameter of the fruit with calipers. Um, and we also went through a process of for whole plots of trees. In other words, it might be, you know, let's say a dozen, a dozen trees within a row where we would actually harvest all of that fruit um, we would scan it with the cartographer, of course, of course, before we harvest, and then pick all that fruit and put it through our fruit grader. So we'd get a, a measure of total fruit number, um, uh, fruit weight, fruit size, fruit color, and uh, total yield as well. <clears throat> so a combination of uh, methods we, we were using for this process of, of, of calibration and, and validation. So first of all, just, yeah, this is probably a pretty messy slide, but it's um, all of the data we've for for four different um, uh, four different cultivars for uh, looking at skin color, and this has probably been the most difficult parameter that we've been you know tried to actually uh, calibrate and, and uh, 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 calibrate the cartographer to be able to estimate. And you know we've fallen on really it looks like hue angle might be the best uh, measure of, of of color that can be detected by the um, uh, cartographer uh, based on this data here. 
Um, in terms of fruit diameter with uh, the cartographer, we ended up having a, a pretty good relationship with the comparison between the measurements we took with calipers versus uh, what was being produced from the cartographer. And that's those figures on the left-hand side are a whole range of different row spacings, training systems, uh, different crop types, in other words, apricot, et cetera, um, nectarine, plum and peach, and of course, different heights in the canopy. Um, but what we did after taking all that sort of um, calibration, we did go out into a, a, a commercial couple of commercial blocks, you know, three commercial blocks, and compared with the um, what the cartographer was generating in, in terms of fruit diameter versus what we actually measured. Um, and of course, those measurements weren't single fruit. This was, I think, anywhere up to four or 500 fruit that we actually measured and took the average of across the you know, row or plot or whatever it might have been. Um, you can see there's a slight uh, uh, difference there between um, uh, what we might have expected based on the previous data I showed. And then the, you know, the last, I think I haven't got much, very long to go, have I, Dave? Um, I'll, I won't be long. This is the last sort of slide I'll show. Um, so yes, so this is our, our data from fruit number um, uh, with the cartographer and, um, uh, you know, counting fruit across a block. And you can see the sort of map that on the right hand uh, side there of the map that gets produced by the cartographer in terms of spatial dis distribution of um, fruit number. Uh, and and it, it um, really highlights, you know, <laughs> I don't think the grower was too happy about his plums having that sort of level of variation in crop load, but it really highlights the power of the, uh, the, the, the instrument to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, there's a few next steps there. I, I look, I won't go through these, but basically we've still got a year left in the project and we'll go through a process of, of continuing to, um, uh, to, 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 to validate, but also evaluate the utility of these, of these um, tools. In other words, get them out to fruit growers and packers. And I'd just like to acknowledge the, the team. Yeah, I don't do a lot of the, <laughs> the work. It, 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 it's gotta be attributed to all the people that are listed on this particular slide. Uh, including um, the, the guys from uh, Green Atlas as well as Rubens Technologies. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ian. Um, look, um, it's, it's not lost on me that this, is, this project is probably got the largest array of uh, what I would call TRL, technology readiness level, or mature technical products being used at once. And, you know, TRL 9, we'd say these are, these are in the marketplace. They're well backed by teams. How have you found the experience of working with with the Rubens and the Green Atlas teams? Given that you're really struck, you're really challenged by the physiology of what's going on in the orchards, yet they've got a commercial sensor. How do you find the interaction with these guys? Well, I think it's one of the Eurekas, Dave. <laughs> it's been um, oh, it's been absolutely fantastic. You know, like it's I, I couldn't have. Um, we, we we couldn't have a better relationship with these guys, and and you know whether it's even them taking on board processing of the data extremely rapidly, turn around, you know, immediate, uh, helping with presentations, you know, all of those things. And even, you know, working with the industry guys, trying to, you know, get them on board more, you know, the growers, for example, I think it's been a, it's been a very, you know, from my experience, very successful, Dave. Mm. So, and, and that was going to be the next question I got from someone as well was, um, how important have, do you feel that the tech teams, the Rubens and the Green Atlas team, have been in helping you, if you like, broker the solutions pathway to them? Like the, this is a glimpse of the future. You've got producers seeing crop load variations that they may be uncomfortable about, didn't know. Is it a really re revealing to them, just looking at what's coming out? Oh, yes, most definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, well, it's sort of, I think it's, it can be pretty upsetting and distressing for them to sort of see that. Um, but then they are quite prepared to take on board, you know, what they might be able to do about it uh, and how they can, you know, utilise the data generated from these type of, you know, tools to improve their management. And um, that's really the next step is, you know, well, and we've got a role to play in that as well is, uh, you know, coming up with the management uh, side of it. You know, how, how can they utilise this to improve their management and get better consistency in their fruit? Yeah, excellent. And on behalf of us all, thank you on the team. Uh, that was a real eye-opening presentation and uh, looking forward to hearing uh, more and more of the hard lessons learned as industry really come to grips with the opportunities here. So thanks again, Ian. And um, uh, everyone, uh, you know where Ian is, based in Ag Victoria Research. 
and I'm um, very, very tightly connected to this to the other smart farm in the country. Just worth a look. Thanks, Ian.